Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, hey, yo, and ladies and gents, I'm just checking to make sure that the audio is playing because I just redid this computer after the AI system keeps hacking it. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to do a little bit of explaining and we're going to try to get to the point without the antics. <laughs> That's a joke. Okay, but we're going to try to get to the point, okay, as best we can. What we're showing you right now, I want you to pay attention. This is the 79th Congress, first session, chapter 186, June 12th, 1945, or the June 12th, 1945 Act. This is to amend section 11C and section 16. We're concerned about section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act as amended and for other purposes. See, to amend as amended, amended 1933, and again, June 6, 19, I mean, October 6, 1917. Don't worry about all that. We're concerned about this paragraph here, Section 2 of Section 16, of Paragraph 16. See, Section 2, the second paragraph of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act, as amended, is amended. See, it was amended in 1933, is amended to read as follows. Ladies and gentlemen, statutes, these statutes at large are not the same as this junk right here. U.S. Code, I want you all to pay attention. The U.S. Code is not law, not written by Congress. Pay attention. Any Federal Reserve Bank, any Federal Reserve Bank, this is a negative determiner, negative identifier. Negative integer. This determiner determining whether or not this pronoun or noun is specifically referred to or non specifically referred to. Any is non specifically referred to, which means it's a negative determiner. This any, when you do the research, now you guys are going to be, some of y'all are going to be amazed, but not all of y'all are going to be amazed because y'all just don't get amazed like that. Uh, give me a second. We're going to go here. Oh, this is the wrong one. Dag nabbit. I got to open this one. It might be opera or it could be the other one. You know, because the windows are already open, we're going to open up both of these. And the reason for it is because we got to show you something unique about Cornell Law. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I both know that there are no such things as coincidences. Coincidences? There is no such thing as a coincidence. It's not opera, so it's got to be this one here. So let me go ahead and get opera from loading. Hey, opera. Bye-bye. All right. Oh, I didn't save it. Oh, no. Let's see if we can get some history. Uh, okay, we'll do this right here. And we'll do that right there. All right, that's what I needed. That's what I want. That's what I want. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take you to 412. Sorry about the. No, that's the script. This is No Fear Act. We we're looking up some other stuff earlier today. I don't need any of this. I don't know where it is. So let's do that. One, two, Uncle Sam's calling me to the military, but I told him no. Ladies and gentlemen, the first one we're going to go to, we're not going to any of these fine laws or anything like that. We're going to go to Cornell Law, and the way to get to Cornell Law is you got to go with Google because Google is the one who has a contract with Cornell. That's why it shows up first all the time. Ta-da! All right. Plus, Cornell Law is the official internet publisher of the U.S. Code. I want you all to pay attention. Any Federal Reserve Bank, they gave you a link, a hyperlink for Reserve Bank, not Federal Reserve Bank, because there is no definition for Federal Reserve Bank when you are dealing with any so let's do Reserve Bank. Let's find out. A Reserve Bank 
the term bank. See, it doesn't say reserve. Oh, look at that. Reserve bank uses its own name in its definition. So this is not the definition for reserve bank. You cannot define a word with the word. No, this is a term. This is legal terminology. Pay attention. Legal terminology. These are two words. So this is a legal term, reserve bank. Reserve bank, the term bank. But it didn't say bank. It said banks with an S. The term banks, B-A-N-K-S. So pay attention. That's not with an S. Ah, but any Federal Reserve bank is many, not one. Pay attention. There is a reason they did it this way. National Bank, National Banking Association, Member Bank, Board, District, or Reserve Bank shall have the meaning as assigned to them in Section 221. But you notice they did not give us a hyperlink for Section 221. They gave us a hyperlink for Section 21A. But look, I want you to take a look. You see how they start off, off at B? Wait, hold on. They started us off at B. Hold on. Watch this. Four, four, one, two. Let's see where they're going to, what part of the page they're going to start off, off at. Well, look at that right at the top. Hold on. We, we ain't going to just stop right there. Let's, let's put in another code that we know, Title 12. Let's put in 349. I don't know if there's a 349. I'm, oh, look at that. There is a 349. Read discount for intermediate credit banks of obligations given agricultural purposes. Discount of notes made pursuant to Section 1031. But it's the very title that they're taking us. So let's go back to 221. 221A. 221A. Now, you see, when I put it in up here, it takes me to 221A. Hold on. Let's do our math, ladies and gentlemen. We can go to Reserve Bank, and we're going to click on this link here and watch where it puts us. Did you see how it put us at the top, and then it brought us here? Now, why did it bring us all the way down here? Because, remember, we're supposed to be going here. We're not supposed to be reading that junk. That's not where we're going. We're supposed to be here. So pay attention. 221. This says section 221. We clicked over here because this says this is where the source is. That is a lie. The source is 221. Assign them in 221. But it sends us to 221A. We need to go to 221. Now, by the way, of which a member bank directly or indirectly owns or controls either a majority of the voting shares. Why do we need to know that? What you guys need to know is if you do the research on member banks, you will see that you are a non-member bank of the Federal Reserve. Okay? But we need to go here. So let's go here. Definitions. Whenever the word bank See, now we're not doing a term anymore. We're doing a word. What? You guys are not paying attention? Hold on. The term banks with an S. This is a word. Word up. Whenever the word bank is used in this chapter, the word shall be held. The word. And the word was. Anyway, and the word shall be held to include, but not exclude, state bank, banking association, trust company, except where national bank and Re federal reserve banks, with an S, are specifically referred to. Interesting, huh? Where federal reserve banks, with an S, are specifically referred to, then it's going to do what? Are specifically referred to, then it shall not mean any bank. It shall not include state banks and banking association and trust companies. It shall mean specifically national bank or federal reserve bank. Now, here, the terms 
National Bank and National Banking Association are interchangeable, synonymous. So National Bank and National Banking Associations, NA, National Banking Association, mean the same thing. The term member bank shall be held to mean any national bank, state bank, or bank. So once we get to the point where we know that the term shall mean any bank, then we have to come here. Give me a second. You got to scroll down. And we have to go to presidential, pay attention, presidential proclamation declaring a bank holiday 2039. Why? Because the president, not the general, but the president said, as used in this order, the term banking institutions shall include all banks. What type of banks? Well, persons engaged in the business of receiving deposits. You eat food? Well, you're depositing food in your mouth. You put stuff in your pockets where you're depositing junk in your pockets. You put stuff in your purse while you're depositing stuff in your purse. You put stuff in your wallet. It didn't say what type of deposits. It says in the business of receiving deposits. And or transacting any other form of banking business. Ladies and gentlemen, we transact banking business all the time. We negotiate deals all the time. Banking business. So. Now that we've gotten that cleared up, let's go back to the act as amended. Oh, no, 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 no. See, nobody else is going to do that for you because, see, when people first read this, they just read it. Any Federal Reserve Bank, so they were thinking that that meant the 13 Federal Reserve Banks. I never really studied it, people. Didn't care to. So my job is to use statutory interpretation. Look up the nine principles of statutory interpretation it's real simple well no 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 okay no it wasn't simple at first when i was and i'm not joking eight or nine years old this was not simple and why wasn't it simple because eight or nine years old i'm in the kingdom hall and they're going over trust and they're going over agreements um sorry sorry I, I'm sending a text message to somebody because they they got they finally got it. Um, so I'm like, yes, sir. Uh, anyway, and while in the Kingdom Hall, Jehovah's Witnesses are going over in the Watchtower magazine. See, people think the Watchtower magazine is propaganda and where Jehovah's Witnesses brainwash people, you morons. That is a study article. They use that to study the Bible. And by using the Watchtower to study the Bible, they break down exactly what you see me doing here. All of my videos that you see me doing are based upon that arrangement that I learned in the Kingdom Hall. I'm not teaching you religion here because they don't teach religion in the Kingdom Hall. (laughs) It's the simple fact. You go to the Kingdom Hall to learn about God's kingdom. That's why it's called the Kingdom Hall. It's a place, a meeting place where individuals go to learn about God's kingdom. That's just that simple. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing is I'm taking the techniques, technology that I learned there, and I'm bringing it here, and I'm pointing it out to you. So let's go ahead and do that. Any Federal Reserve Bank, that includes you. Now, some of you are going to have to prove that. For the people, we're uh, going to talk about the mortgages in a minute. For the people that we're getting ready to do the mortgages for, we will already prove that for you may make an application didn't say an application but pay attention may make application now does it need a physical application of course it does i'll explain why in a minute to the local see the this is a positive determiner why because it's specific local federal reserve agent didn't say national it said local so it's specific And if it had said national, that would be specific. But if it had said any Federal Reserve agent, then that would not be specific. Uh, 
okay. Sorry, the person is texting me back, and I need to just let him know. Um, well, I don't have to let him know. He already he's already been given the approval to get what we need. So, Federal Reserve agent for such amount of Federal Reserve notes, plural. Uh, give me one second. Just telling them, okay, fine, because we've been going back and forth with texting, and I really don't like the texting thing. I keep telling people, call me. Anyway, let's get this done. Such an amount of Federal Reserve notes, plural, not singular, here and before provided for as it may require. Such application shall be accompanied, so the application has to be accompanied with a tender to the local Federal Reserve agent of collateral in the amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve notes thus applied for and issued pursuant to such application. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say something, and some of you guys are going to get too technical, and don't do that because it would not do you any good. And Some of you are going to say, well, why are you going to say it? Because I'm going to let you know that this is what I do. I read this junk and I understand this junk. Ladies and gentlemen, it says any Federal Reserve Bank, meaning you, may make application. It doesn't mean a physical application. Nowhere in here is it implying a physical application. It just says may make application. You can apply verbally. You can apply just by showing up. Such application shall be accompanied with a tender. So you just have to show up with a tender. Now, I'm not saying do that. I'm saying give them a physical application, people. Give them a physical application because we're dealing with a trust here. It's a trust agreement. We're dealing with a trust. And so this amendment to the trust now suggesting that an application is needed, give them a physical application. Okay? Give them a physical application. And then it says, of collateral in the amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve notes thus applied for and issued pursuant to such application. The collateral security thus offered shall be notes, drafts, bills of exchange, or acceptances acquired under the provisions of Section 13 of this Act, the Federal Reserve Act. So go and read Section 13 of the Federal Reserve Act. That's what they're telling you. Or bills of exchange endorsed by a membered bank are of any Federal Reserve District. See, any Federal Reserve District, but it's a membered bank. Or purchased, and by the way, you are membered banks. Shh, 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 don't tell nobody. Or purchased under the provisions of Section 14 of this Act. So what you need to do is Section 13. 16 and 13 of the Act is what you need to focus on. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you why 12 U.S.C. is not law. We are going to get rid of this, and we're going to do bills of exchange or acceptances acquired under Section 92, 342, 348, 349. 352, 361, 372, or 373 of this title or bills of exchange endorsed by a member bank or any Federal Reserve District are purchased under the provisions of 348A, 353, 359. Let's go back to the Act. Do you see any of that 359, 348 junk here? So pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. That's why the code is not law. Because they altered it. The same thing that people do to Bibles, the same thing that they take words and they add and all that junk. Oh, you Jehovah's Witnesses! Excuse me, Jehovah's Witnesses did not do anything. The only thing you will find is that individuals took God's name out of the Bible and they literally adopted a Bible that had God's name in it. There's so much that you people don't know, but I just wish you'd understand. Stop blaming Jehovah's Witnesses for your ignorance. They're not responsible for that. 
I've been talking to so many people and they have so many different concepts about God and I don't understand it. How can you all claim to be serving the same God and you believe so many different things? Lord have mercy. We're going to get back to this, okay? Now, it says, or bankers' acceptance is purchased under the provisions of said section 14 or gold certificates or direct obligations of the United States in no event shall so such collateral security be less than the amount of the Federal Reserve notes applied for. Federal Reserve agents shall each day notify the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System of all issues and withdrawals of Federal Reserve notes to and by the Federal Reserve Bank to which he is accredited. The said Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System may at any time call upon the Federal Reserve Bank for additional security to protect the Federal Reserve note issued to it. All power and authority with respects to the issuance of circulating notes, known as Federal Reserve Bank Notes, pursuant to the sixth paragraph of Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act, as amended by Section 401 of the Act, approved March 9, 1933, 48.1 and 6, shall cease and terminate on the date of the enactment of this Act. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only amendment, the Act of June 12th, 1945, not 13th, because that's the 13th down here. June 12th, 1945, that's the only thing it changed. The rest of the Act is still here. The letter from the, ho I mean, that woman from the Treasury, she says it right here. You may be interested to know that the authority for the issuance of circulating notes, excuse me, hold on. Um, we are trying to get Federal Reserve notes, We're not trying to get bank notes. So they, they don't give out them circulating notes anymore. Pursuant to the sixth paragraph, Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act was terminated by the express. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Let me do y'all a favor. Y'all want to focus with me? Those circulating notes, oh, I got to go back. Those circulating notes that she's talking about, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Okay. Y'all see this, this, this green and bluish paragraph right here? Right here, right here, right here. See how long that is? Let's go. Okay, that's paragraph number six. That's how long it is. And it talks a whole lot more about things other than circulating notes. For instance, let me tell you, such notes shall be obligation of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be received at par in all parts of the United States for the same purpose as national bank notes and shall be redeemable in lawful money upon presentation to the United States Treasury or the bank of issue. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that has nothing to do with circulating notes. That hasn't been amended. See, what I had to learn by watching her respond in this letter that she pointed me on to being specific, by her being specific. And I don't think this is an attorney. I don't think she did that by mistake. I think she did that purposely. I think she was drawing me a bone. I got it. I caught it, and I don't mind chewing on a bone. Did it when I was a kid. It was fun. So, Miss Cholet. <laughs> Taylor Finnell, anyway, is an attorney. We showed you her junk. She's an attorney. Do I, did she piss me off or anything? Was she trying to make me upset? No, because I anticipated this response. It's just, I don't think she realized whom she was communicating with. And when I say I don't think she realized, I think she probably watched a video or two and presumed something other than what she was communicating with. But I do believe that her putting this in here on purpose, let me let me show you why I believe this, okay? She says, the staff searched board records and did not locate any documents responsive to your request. Therefore, we are unable to provide you with any responsive information. If you believe that the determination that no responsive records exist is incorrect, you may administratively appeal, ladies and gentlemen. 
Did you pay attention to the word responsive? And you see how it's right underneath each other here? Three times in one paragraph she uses the word responsive? Why? She's an attorney. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's not like you or not. She went to school for this. And she works for the Federal <laughs> Reserve Board? You better believe she's a learned person and she's one of those handshaking people, okay? She's a member of the craft. She practices the craft and she understands and observes the sanctity of the cloth, okay? There is no way in the world this young lady made a mistake like this. Oh, that was a coincidence. That's a lie. And if she says that it, it wasn't intentional, then it was subconscious. Because we have responsive, 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 all in one paragraph. Now, that's not the only thing. You know, she highlights the new information provided. New information? I didn't provide any new information. I just reiterated what I said before. But she talks about that I was relying on a code. I wasn't relying on no code. Then she claims that, or she implies, hold on. She implies that this is what I said. Right here, she implies the procedures for banking institutions for depositing and or receiving deposits, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, trade acceptances, and bankers' acceptances, or other United States government obligations. But you notice she doesn't put it in quotations. Why? Because she did that right there. So I decipher this the same way I decipher everything else. Law. See? You further advise that you are looking for information as to how that section of the act, the six paragraph section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act as amended by section 401 of the 1933 Banking Act is applied at present day for banking institutions. She says, we ain't got no information on that. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't the only question. This was the question. But, okay, so depositing and receiving, as deposits, no straws, bills of exchange for banking institutions. Of course, you guys have. Oh, snap. I just realized it, ladies and gentlemen, right here live with all of you. The reason why they don't have any regulations, because according to the act of presidential proclamation, uh, I think it was 2070. And the one just before that, uh, the last one by Roosevelt amending the act. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Banking institutions are unregulated. So there are no regulations. So what does that tell us? Well, I want you to pay attention. I didn't say this. She said it. These are her words. We're unable to provide you with any information. If you believe that the determination that no records exist is incorrect, okay, then she says, we did not locate any documents responsive to your request. Now, I'll put responsive there because it's appropriate. But responsive records, that's not appropriate there. See, that's why I say the responsive word, responsive records, that word doesn't make any sense. It doesn't go with records. We didn't locate any records. So I don't have to focus on, oh, oh why did she use responsive? Well, I'm glad you guys asked. The reason why she used responsive is so that she can go later and say, well, no, those those are acts, and those are not our records. I wasn't asking them for their records. I was asking them for information. It's called a Freedom of Information Act, not a Freedom of Records Act. And so I wasn't asking for records. I was asking about policy and procedures. But she knew that. So, ladies and gentlemen, they just told me that there are no restrictions and that there are nothing in the way of any of their policies that prohibit me from applying for notes. So one last thing. I'll, I clicked on one of the links. Where are you at, Federal Reserve? No, you're going to be in the other one. Dang, nabbit. What's this one? No, that's the Fifth Amendment. Um, we're going to talk about the Fifth Amendment in a second, but... I don't know where it is. So let me click on it again. Hold on. Let me show you what I did. And then we're going to bring this video to a close. Because I told you I was going to keep it. Keep it. 
Simple. I need order. Where's the one with order? Checks, cash deposit, ordering. There it is. Okay, so we just gonna yes, yeah, and it's gonna take me here. I must have clicked off of it. Bad cash servicing, ladies and gentlemen. Coin depositing and ordering. Currency depositing and ordering. Go ahead and read it. Do you know that you can order Federal Reserve notes? That's right. Application. Promissory note better attach. They did say that they sent me a response of pleading. Ladies and gentlemen, I just need for you guys to understand is there's information here that might be helpful for you. Okay. Where are we at? This is frbservices.org, F Federal Reserve Board, frbservices.org, forward slash resources, forward slash financial hyphen services, with an S, forward slash cash, C-A-S-H, forward slash depositing hyphen ordering, without an S, depositing hyphen ordering. That's where we are. You can click and click and click. This one says currency depositing. It will take you here. And you can click and click and click because they didn't put these links here for their health. Because they can't hide the information from you. Now, hey, here are some numbers right here. Give them a call. Okay, you don't have to call. This is Atlanta, Baltimore, Birmingham, Boston, Buffalo, Charlotte, and Chicago. There's more but I don't want to give you all of them because that's not my job. Ladies and gentlemen, call them. Ask the questions. Okay? See, report financial crimes by contacting a Secret Service field office. Call them and ask. Okay? United States Secret Service. Call them. Ask them about the act. Because guess what? Do you know that the United States Treasury said that promissory notes Drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances are all bogus monies. So call them. Ask them, so what does that make the Federal Reserve Act? A bogus act? Ladies and gentlemen, you all need to understand. Uh Uh-oh, it ain't moving. I'm clicking on it, but I can't come in. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here, right, right here, This right here is, uh, it's going to come back one more again. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the Federal Reserve Act. So, since the Federal Reserve Act says that your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and acceptances are to be deposited with the local Federal Reserve agent, and you deposit them with the local Federal Reserve agent, how can it be bogus? There are no regulations. What? You guys didn't... She said there's no regulations, people. So how can they be bogus? Well, show me the proper way. There has to be a proper way. Since you're saying it's bogus, that means there has to be a proper way. Okay, we'll find and don't copy it. Skip. Sorry, I was saving some files. That's why I was doing this video. Because I back up all my files. They try to destroy. They try to mess up. And they didn't mess up anything. But, again, I still had to go through the hassle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the next two minutes, we're going to talk about the mortgages. SACOM is getting ready to help those of you who are pre-foreclosure. That means if you are less than... 90 days behind in your mortgage and they have not started foreclosure proceedings starting Monday. There will be a website and a link. The website is not complete yet, so you will have to be patient. The name of the website, just so that you guys will know, it will be A as in Apple, M as in Mary, C as in Charlie, F as in Frank, dot E-S-T-A-T-E estate amcf dot estate that's the name of the website it is not complete yet 
it's forbidden now because we haven't done anything, okay? And that's why there's an error. We They have to populate it. It's already paid for. This is ours, 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 amcf.estate. We chose the estate and the AMCF because AMCF is a real estate company that we own, and estate, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're dealing with. We're going to be helping individuals who have tendered payment with, by depositing their note and their application to the local Federal Reserve agent who followed this law and who are current. You can be current in your mortgage. This ain't going to kill you. This ain't going to hurt you. This ain't going to cause any damage to your property. It's only going to document a couple of things. Now, a lot of people are going, but I thought you said you're going to help people who were, you know, going through mortgage crisis and all of that stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not here to help the people who have mortgages where banks are coming after them. I had one guy, and I want you to pay attention, and he's going to watch this video, and he's going to eventually hear it. He was supposed to call me this evening, and he didn't. But he called me, scheduled a consult, and I have a lot of respect for him. This doesn't change anything. I'm just explaining to you guys what I explained to him. I told him, you're coming to me after you've been foreclosed on. I said, I can help you remain in the property, but you're going to have to do what I say. First thing I said you have to do is you have to put in a petition for stay pending appeal. He said the appeal had already been filed. I said, I understand, and you didn't ask for a stay, so you're going to ask for it now. That's what I told him. Two weeks later, hey, did you file that petition for a stay? Well, I, I was thinking I would. Oh, you were thinking, huh? My mind, I'm going, if you were thinking, then why did you come to me? So I said, you need to file that petition for a stay. Ladies and gentlemen, three weeks later, Petition for a stay still wasn't filed. I didn't know until today because he called me and told me the sheriff showed up and kicked his wife and child out of the house. And I know that he was feeling bad. But I told you guys I don't have any empathy or sympathy. I said, I keep saying when people don't listen to me because it causes me a lot of stress. No, don't worry about it. He's not causing me any stress. What's causing me is stress is that they're doing this to people and putting people in situations like this. Yes, he should have listened. He should have not have thought to do it another way because I know more about the policies of the stupid court than he does. See, I'm following their own policies and rules, the stuff that they don't tell you about. They just tell you to file an appeal. They don't have. They don't tell you you got to ask for a stay pending an appeal. If you don't ask for a stay then you're more than likely going to lose that property. Had I had known he didn't do that, I would have put him on the next course. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to come to SACOM to help you, you're going to have to follow instructions. Nobody's done this before. No one has done this before. We're not going to tell you all of the steps that we're doing. We will give you the, the basics of it because what's going to happen is there are going to be a lot of people out there charging people hundreds and thousands of dollars, making them all kind of promises. Look, we ain't got time for that. We're not going to make you any promises. It's going to be a straight agreement. And literally, you're going to take your property and put it in a trust. It doesn't have to be our trust, but you will take your property and you will trustify that property. Okay? That's your protection. You will take the property and you will put it in a trust. Read section 18. Of your deed of trust. Read section 18, second paragraph of your deed of trust. Now, that they're going to claim is implying that you've done it in contrary to the terms of the deed of trust. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two points that we're going to be bringing up that prove that you have not operated contrary to the deed of trust by placing your property in a trust. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not received a foreclosure notification and you are current on your mortgage, take your property and put it in a trust. Go to what's the name of that. It's called, I don't know why I can't, Rocket Lawyer 
is one of them, and Legal Depot is the other one. They have trust documents. Just take it. It's a revocable trust. Take it and convert it to a irrevocable trust. Create the document. Use the language that's already in there. Make not well, make the husband the trustee, make the wife the beneficiary, the wife and the kids. And if it's just the wife and the kids, the wife is the trustee and the kids are the beneficiaries. That way you keep total control. See, when you put your property in the trust, you don't give us control. You put your property in a trust with us, we still don't have control. You are still the beneficiary. You put your property in a trust, one of our trusts, and we are the grantors and the trustee. We will never take your property from you. You're the beneficiary. We will never sell it to cause you any type of harm. That's not how I operate. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys don't understand. When I mention to you all that I'm a Jehovah's Witness, I'm invoking his name. And if I did something wrong, that would bring reproach on his name. And if you knew anything about Jehovah's Witnesses, that is the one thing we break our necks never to do, is to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. So, I'm not doing this in Jehovah's name. I'm not doing this as a Jehovah's Witness. I don't want anybody to get that twisted, because I can see it now. But as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I am doing this as a person who has done the best he could in the last almost 30 years of my life remaining in honor at every level, at every aspect. At least, yeah, I can say I've done as best I could. All right. Once we start to help people, and it will be $580, that will be the flat fee, uh, plus the 50% of whatever monies we help to acquire for you in the end. And we've already stated it for the last five years. So five years for the last five years. And if you haven't paid <laughs> for the last 10 years, then you don't owe nothing. There are a lot of you out there who have mortgages. You're going to have to give us about probably November 20th before we start helping any of you who are currently facing foreclosures. Same process. It's just we cannot take you right now. Okay. Oh, and I will tell you, those of you who are with Amera Legion, I got one more thing that I do need to explain. I did explain it on the last video. Everyone needs to pay attention. It says if under IRS tax topic 453, if your friend, if your neighbor, if your uncle, if your cousin, your niece, your uncle, mothers, sisters, brothers, you know, owes you money and you intended on it to be a loan and not a gift and they don't pay you, then you can simply forgive them of the debt and receive a deduction. Look, it says you don't have to cross no special T's and, and dot no special I's in order to receive the deduction. And if you wait until the end of the year for that deduction, well, I did the deduction last year. I didn't know about this. Well, then fine. Now you carry it forward to this year, and it's a credit. That's the simplest way of explaining it. And there is not a single tax agent out there that can tell you that I'm wrong. The IRS can't tell you that I'm wrong, because then if anybody tells you that mother doesn't know what he's talking about, then you say, well, then what this IRS tax topic 453 talking about? It says it right here. He says, say, anybody owe me a debt? that I get to write it off as a bad debt as long as I fill out the 3115 form. Every last one of our clients will be filling out a 3115 form. You'll be using the accrual method from now on. Well, I don't understand the accrual method. Positives and negatives. You have two sides of the ledger. On one ledger, you have the numbers. On the other ledger, you have identical numbers. And you put negative on one side and positive on the other. That's how you're going to do it. Because that's your understanding of the accrual method. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You don't have to follow GAAP. You are a sole proprietor. You are not a licensed business. So don't worry. 
Remember, there is no money, people. What you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Congress didn't explain it to you? Hold on. Let me let Congress tell it to you. Somebody said, well, you said, no, I didn't say a thing. I've been telling y'all what Congress has said. Because if I talk, nobody going to believe me. I skipped it. It's right here. See, this is, see, it's the New Deal. The new what? The New Deal. And guess what it says about the New Deal? It tells you there's going to be some new money. New money? What do you mean new money? This new money? Wait a minute. New money? Wait, I thought you said there was no money. Oh, there is money. Money in the form of Federal Reserve notes and notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances, and government contract obligations. These are the security and the gold for the Federal Reserve notes that are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agents. Ladies and gentlemen, how is it possible that this could work? How did Congress do this to all of us? Because under the new law, the new money is issued to the banks in return for government obligations, bills of exchange, draft notes, trade acceptances, and banker's acceptances. The money is worth 100 cents on a dollar. That's why the note and the application have to be for the same amount. Because it is backed by the credit of the nation, which will represent a mortgage on all the homes and other property of all the people. Section 412, people. I know, I know, I know. Why did it take me so long to bring this out to you this way? Because you couldn't receive it before. It's too many words, ladies and gentlemen. Too many words that are contradicting itself. Pay attention. The gold is given up by the people in the present crisis. See, pay attention. Pay attention. The gold given up by the people should be issued to, uh, should be used to issue additional money upon which the people will not have to pay any interest while it's in circulation. Do you understand that, ladies and gentlemen? That's how you're supposed to read this. Get rid of all the gobbledygook, the junk. The fluff. That's why it's so confusing. Let's do this one right here. Under the law, the money is given to the banks in exchange for bills of exchange. The money is worth 100 cents on a dollar. And so are the bills of exchange. And that's the credit of the nation, by the way. Shh, don't tell nobody. That's why... The bills of exchange, the notes, the drafts, the trade acceptances. That's the credit of the nation, people. How do you think the Treasury creates its T-bills? Where do you think they create their T-bills off of? You think the Treasury just creates these bills out of thin air? Remember, it has to be backed by something. Shh, don't tell nobody. And it represents a mortgage on all the homes and other property of all the people. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, because you have to back your notes with something. You don't have gold. Wait, you didn't you didn't get that? You gave up your gold to be able to have this, but remember, they can require additional securities. Go back and read 412. The banks can acquire require additional securities. It says it right here. May prescribe the Federal Reserve Bank may make advances to individuals, not to exceed blah blah blah, and subject to review and determination by the Federal Reserve Board. This is that section of 412. Again, it's not complicated. You just have to understand that all you have to do is understand. Too many videos have been done by me. So go back, listen to them. Listen to them until you get this, until it's like second nature. And then you can stand in your square and nobody can tell you, no, you can't do that. Because that's the first thing they're going to tell you is, no, you can't do that. Excuse me? No, you can't. Are you telling me you're preventing me from following the law? Well, I'm not. Doo -doo -doo. Then, of course, I can do this. The law says I can do this. Here, let me show you the law that says that I can do this. And then you take them back to 412. As it's listed here, this is in the June 12, 1945 Act. This is, well, you can't even do paragraphs, so it's the 
Section 2 of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act as amended. It says that I can take an application and my note and give it to the local Federal Reserve agent. Pay attention, y'all. Do you notice that it doesn't say that they get to refuse it? Shh, don't tell nobody. And wait, you die, then you don't understand. They don't get to refuse it, people. She just said that there's no responsive information regarding my request. Okay, see? Responsive to your request. What was my request? My request was, hey, what's the procedure? See? Procedure. That was my request. And then she says that my request continued to be, hold on, let me see, where is it? No, not there. It's It's got to be here. The next, nope, that ain't it. Where is that other request? She said two requests. I, oh, uh, looking for information on how the section of the act, blah, 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 as amended is applied at the present day for banking institutions. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. Well, ladies and gentlemen, she knew the section I was talking about because she highlighted it right here. She says, hey, part of that section has been repealed, terminated. Okay, well, that's that section, but let's y'all need to understand. Okay, because this is the same act at section number two. That's what you want. 59 stat 238, subsection two. Say what? How, how you get that? Watch this. Section two. Section 3. So, subsection 2 of the Act of June 12, 1945. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you can't hear it in my voice, there's a lot of fatigue, stress, and so I was going to let y'all go. We weren't supposed to be going this long. I even told you guys 20 minutes ago that it was only going to be two more minutes, but there was information. Now, the information regarding the young man who got put out of his house, there is a very strong possibility that he will be in it by next week if he follows instructions. It's not over with yet. God, it is not over with yet. But that this is designed to break families up and to make people give up. Okay, I know many of you uh, have some financial issues and some problems. Look, ladies and gentlemen, read over the act till you understand it. You don't have the problems you think you have. Read over the act until you understand it. All right. Now, this, my hope is this will be up. Uh, you guys can download this. Okay. I'm giving you the act right here. All you got to do is pull it up. You can pull it up from the con congressional website. You can pull it up. It's available. Okay. You can pull up this act. All right. If not, just copy it and write it down you see me i've shown it to you i've held it up on the screen on purpose look we'll even do you this right now no that's too much huh mama okay we'll do that right now and then we'll, we'll give you the the beginning so that you can see it and then you just have to pause the video and when you get everything that you need you just have to pause the video and when you get everything you need you just have to pause the video. And when you get everything you need, you just have to pause the video. And when you get everything you need, now you have the whole act. You're gonna have to put forth some work. I can't do everything for you. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I really am slowing down. But I knew that was coming. Hey, do yourselves a favor. USA Today did a story on the chemicals in game, G A M E game fish and wildlife anyway deer and fish the chemicals found in deer and fish wait we're going to show that to you real quick read this article from the USA today because this is what I was telling you guys the uh, USA it's called uh Dang it, I forgot what type of chemicals. Um, let's see.
Yeah, no, it's, um, they did this article. I just tripped over it because Google wanted me to trip over it. Um, hold on, let me go to, oh, this was Google. Then why did you show me it in the, oh, because it hadn't translated. See that up there? That's what I was watching. Okay, USA Today, forever chemicals found in deer and fish prompts blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, read this, please. Okay, read this. I guarantee you, you'll understand what's been going on on this planet. Read this article. Forget about the report or anything. Read the article about what they've been doing and what the government has been allowing them to do. This is not just happening because somebody decided that's what we want to do. This is happening because the government said, okay, y'all can get away with it. And, uh, what did they do? The company uh, La, La Grande or whatever it was called, the construction company, they charged them $800 million. It's a, the world's largest construction company, $800 million. Billion dollar company, you're going to charge them $800 million. That's like charging somebody who has $10 a dollar. What the? Ladies and gentlemen, they were in bed with Al Qaeda. No, uh, what did it say? ISIS? Paying ISIS over $10 million just so that they could stay in business. Just so that they could stay in business. They were paying ISIS. You remember terrorism? Yeah, they were sponsoring terrorism. And nobody went to jail. No, they just $800 million. Nobody went to jail. But I guarantee you, look at all the other people who went over to there and fought for them and look at how they're getting life. But they didn't do that. They gave them $20 million. Of course, they're culpable for the deaths of those people as a result of the monies that were used to carry out those acts. They would have gone after you and me if we had done it. But because that company is a billion dollar company, multi billion dollar company, Nobody goes to jail and they just, okay, 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 you just sit there. Don't do that no more. No, don't you do that no more. How dare you? You just sit there and you know you're going to go to your room and you're going to close that door and you're going to stay in your room for the entire weekend. Now, I put that PlayStation right there up on your bed, okay? And I gave you those three new games that you asked for. But you, you, you going to play those three new games, but you cannot play Call of Duty until after you play the first three games. All right? And you get a high score, you let me know. All right? But Call of Duty lasts, okay? All right, now go on up in your room. All right? You're on a punishment. That's what they did, ladies and gentlemen. They basically gave them a timeout in their room with all of the gaming and everything, telephone, everything. Just get to be up in their room comfortable. Where they hang out all the time anyway. That's what the government did. It's a wonderful world, ain't it? Hey, thank you guys for joining me tonight. I hope this information proves beneficial and helpful to some of you, many of you, hopefully, any of you. Have a coke, have a smile. Goodbye.